Thank you for joining Vancouver Bitcoiners. Please enjoy our next guest speaker. Thank you to our sponsors, Adaptech Group, Canada's premier event-driven development company, and Bull Bitcoin, Canada's premier Bitcoin company since 2013. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I, I can't see anybody, so uh, I'm, I'm talking to my phone right now, but I'm assuming there's, there's a few of you guys out there. Um, and thanks so much, Alexandra, for inviting me uh, over. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm the CEO of Bull Bitcoin. Um, I don't have a fancy speech prepared for tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm back in Canada after two years in exile. I left the country at the early onset of the lockdowns. Oh, I can see you guys. Cool. Um, and I've been uh, working out of Central America for the past two years. I'm here, you know, I got to visit some family from time to time. Um, so for, for today, I thought I'd just give you like a little quick history of, of oh, hi guys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> give you a little quick history of, you know, bull Bitcoin and I'm um, really just kind of like answer your questions uh, about, um, if you guys want to know about like business stuff at Bull Bitcoin, like what we're planning or how it works behind the scenes, that, that kind of stuff, that'd be that'd be cool. I love explaining how like how those things work. Yeah. So uh, since this is a bit devs, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, like our open source project Cyphernode, how that works. Um, if you guys have any questions about how being a non custodial uh, exchange works and that kind of stuff, um, that'd be cool. Um, but just a little background about like what bull Bitcoin is. Um, I've been selling Bitcoins, uh, Bitcoin only and non-custodial, non-custodially non for the past nine years. Uh, I'm not selling my own Bitcoins. I'm a professional Bitcoin seller. Um, although I do sell my own Bitcoins because as a real Bitcoin maximalist, I have nothing else than Bitcoins. Um, I have a really cool like monster truck. And that's my only like valuable possession besides Bitcoin. Um, so I started selling Bitcoin at an OTC desk, uh, like a physical cash counter at a place called the Montreal Bitcoin Embassy. I mean, back then it was just the Bitcoin Embassy, but now there's there's a bunch all over the world. Um, and it was it was a very fascinating experience. Uh, imagine you're sitting at a desk, and people just walk in. It's like a Bitcoin information kiosk. That's what the Bitcoin embassy was essentially. I mean, it was more than that. We were mining Bitcoin a lot actually in our basement. Uh, it was a 12,000 square foot building. It was gig gigantic. It was a four story, huge building downtown Montreal that was donated by an early Bitcoiner for the purpose of promoting Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, uh, we started to sell uh, Bitcoin over the counter. And then after a few years of doing that, um, people, really like the experience of coming to a place, giving money and receiving Bitcoin directly in return. Um, I, I believe that was the optimal experience. You just show up, give the cash, and then you have your own wallet. And then we would help people install their Bitcoin wallets. And eventually people started to fly from all over Canada, just straight up with literal bags of cash to come buy Bitcoin at the Bitcoin embassy. There was not a lot of, of, of good solutions out there. And people started to text us and be like, hey, um, can, you, can we like, you know, e-transfer you some money? Because we don't want to fly to Montreal to buy Bitcoins from you guys. Uh, so we started this weird text message based service where people would just text us like $200 Bitcoin address. And this is my, uh, and then we would text back our e-transfer e like address. And we had like an actual text message based Bitcoin exchange, kind of like RoboSats, but like just uh, automated uh, with uh, some SMS tools. And then we started to gradually build software to kind of help us manage this, this new business, which was just accepting e-transfers for, uh, for payments for our, what was previously just um, a cash-based Bitcoin business. We were also running some Bitcoin ATMs. And one day we just had such a funny stack of tools and services and automations to help us accept online payments, we're like, holy fuck, we're in exchange now. We're actually accepting payments online and just uh, sending it straight to people. Um, so from a technical standpoint, um, at the very beginning, oh, and also we had the bill payment service uh, where uh, that I acquired in 2015. So we, we, we launched the ancestor of Bull Bitcoin, which was called Bitcoin Outlet in 2015. And about six months after I launched officially um, this online Bitcoin exchange, 
I actually acquired another service that was called Bills, B-Y-L-L-S. That was the world's first Bitcoin payment processing service for bill payments. And what it was, it was just really a PHP site uh, where people would fill in a form and they would say, I want you to pay this biller. And then we had like a thousand Bitcoin addresses that we would manually import into this site and it would just cycle through all of them. And then that would go to our Electrum wallet. Uh, so people would just send Bitcoins to our Electrum wallet via website. And then we would manually go pe pay people's bills from a bunch of bank accounts. So that was like the ancestor of bills. Um, eventually, we started to use um, these. Uh, and there was no blockchain explorer back then that you could use. There was no API. It was really clunky. Um, so we started to use uh, a service called BlockCypher which is a uh, API-based explorer where you, know, you register a Bitcoin address. Um, and when you get paid uh, at that Bitcoin address, you get a callback notification to your app. I can say, oh, OK, cool. The, the, uh, the payment has been made. Uh, before, before having that, we weren't even able to lock in a rate, or we weren't e even able to have notifications that the app it was all manual. And then. Um, and then the API that we use for uh, sending payments out to users was called BitGo. BitGo is still alive today. BlockCypher is kind of like blockchain.info or you know the Coinbase Explorer and all that. Uh, and BitGo was a hosted third-party wallet provider um, that basically it's a custodial wallet that exchanges use. And uh, whenever you want to send funds to users, well, you ping them and they send the funds to your user on your behalf. All you have to do is supply a Bitcoin address and an amount. And at that time, I was already a full-blown Bitcoin maximalist, but I didn't really have the cypherpunk ethos in me at all. I was kind of like a, just a libertarian guy, sound money guy, but I had no con concept of the, you know, running your own node or, or being cypherpunk and, and all of that. And what changed was the um, SegWit2x, SegWit uh, wars, the fork wars. So I was very, very involved in the fork wars really early on for many reasons. I was friends with the people from Blockstream because they had an office in Montreal for the longest time. Before moving to BC, uh, their head office was right across from where I live, and I would hang out with them. Uh, Montreal was actually a pretty big Bitcoin center at one point. We also had the Bitcoin Scaling Conference in Montreal in 2015. If you know what that is or went there, you're definitely an OG. Uh, that was the first big kind of conference where all the developers met in one place with the miners and the exchanges to talk about scalability problem. Anyway, so I got really involved in that and I got um, involved in it at a kind of insider level because I was also, for some reason, on the board of the Bitcoin Foundation uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Bitcoin Foundation, which was a total joke, but anyway, I was on the board and then there was an email uh, mailing list where the, the Segwit2x people, like the big block people, were, were talking about forking Bitcoin. And I was, I knew enough about Bitcoin because I was reading also Mersha's blog, you know, Trilemma, and I knew enough about the Bitcoin spirit to understand like, no, you can't fork Bitcoin. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's nonsensical, right? Uh, so I got, I got really involved in um, the... And then also, uh, I became convinced really early on of, uh, of Lightning Network because I was involved in the Scaling Bitcoin conference. So um, I definitely wanted SegWit to pass. Yeah. Long story short, um, UASF happens and we declare ourselves to be pro-UASF uh, in about February of... 2017, yeah, February 2017. Uh, we're talking about UASF. I'm in the Bitcoin course like We're like, fuck yeah, this is great. I fucking love this narrative. I'm totally in. Let's UASF segue into this thing. The miners don't control shit. And I had a strong dislike for some of the miners that were um, like Jihan and all that. But as an exchange, if I'm deciding to UASF, I can't because Block Cipher is telling me uh, when I receive payment notifications. I, I, I'm not using a Bitcoin full node as an exchange. I'm using a third-party service. And if, so if, I'm, if I want to accept coins from the UASF SAR fork, uh, I need to convince BlockCypher to be, to be USF compatible. 
Same thing with uh, sending coins to users. If I want to send coins on the UESF chain, I need to convince Bitco to support UESF. So same thing with Bitco, right? So uh, we realized that we weren't even using Bitcoin. We were using FinTech APIs. Um, so that led us to, uh, that, was, that was a big realization for me, which was like, like I'm just a skin, I, I'm, just a, a, I'm, I'm just a fiat business plugging into Bitcoin APIs. I'm not even a Bitcoin business because I'm not running a full node as a, as a company. Um, and back then, there was not a lot of tools to run full nodes. You would uh, connect to the Bitcoin Core RPC, but it's really hard to just connect to the Bitcoin Core RPC as an exchange without having all the fancy web API stuff, especially if your exchange developers are not Bitcoin developers, you know, just reg regular JavaScript web app developers. Um, so I hired, a, I hired a, a person that's known as Kexki uh, today he, to develop um, a self-hosted alternative to Blog Cypher and Bitco, um, which eventually became known as Cypher Node. So the, the, core, the core of Bull Bitcoin is actually this open source project. So um, we receive a lot of P Bitcoin payments of high value from users with the bill service. So actually bills is probably like two thirds of our volume. So m the majority of people use, well, not the, vol the, the amount of users is 50-50, but the majority of our volume um, is people selling Bitcoin on, on Bull Bitcoin and um, either you know, through their bank accounts or e-transfers or paying bills, that kind of stuff. So um, we, the, when we receive um, these, uh, these payments, it goes to our own self-hosted uh, stack now. And, and when we send Bitcoin to users, um, we send it uh, from our own Bitcoin Core uh, wallet, which is super cool. So that was the original, uh, the original Cypher node kind of stack was just a uh, web API wrapper over Bitcoin Core, which is wrapped in, in Docker and has all sorts of nice um, web technologies on it. Um, as we started, we started to have this really nice infrastructure. Um, so we added uh, Lightning. So um, our whole Lightning API has been in, you know, live since 2019. Um, and we also added uh, three major new components recently in the last few years. One of them is our coin join tool. Um, one of them is our uh, LN URL server. Uh, we also have the liquid network in this, in this stack. And we also have um, a batching software. So essentially when a user uh, deposits Bitcoin on Bull Bitcoin, or there's no real, so we're non-custodial exchange. So the way it works is when you send Bitcoins to us, as soon as we get a zero conf a transaction, we lock in your rate. So um, the rate will not move. So you, you're hedged at the moment that you send a zero conf transaction. You don't have to wait uh, for the deposit to clear and then sell Bitcoin. You know, if, if, you, if you think the price is good right now, you just send the Bitcoins and then you don't have to worry about the price. And then obviously we don't send people money after a zero conf. So we wait for one conf. And then once the one conf is, uh, is registered by Cypher node, which tells us, hey, we, you received a, a, a confirmation, um, we actually get a, a notification to send the fiat to the person. Um, so when the coins um, are received, they're actually received in a, in a Wasabi wallet, uh, so directly. So they're not received into Bitcoin Core, they're actually received in a Wasabi wallet, um, and then they enter in a coin join with no hops and no aggregation. So it's not like they don't like get into a Bitcoin Core wallet and then they're sent to a mixer and then they're uh, sent out. They're actually sent directly to the mixer receiving address and then they enter a coin join right away. Um, so there's no aggregation that happens so that if you're like doing a dust attack on Bull Bitcoin and you're trying to figure out who else is using Bull Bitcoin, because you could do that. You could just send, generate receiving addresses and send dust to it and then try to follow that dust and see if the dust is aggregated with other um, payments, then you know that whoever your, whichever UTXO your dust was aggregated with um, is another uh, Bull Bitcoin user. Um, so it gets sent to a mixer, it's mixed. Once the mix receives um, the anonymity set that you're looking for, it's actually spent out of there automatically. So we do have our post mix tool. And all of this is open source, by the way, it's, it's in the, Cypher node repository on GitHub and our organization is Satoshi Portal. Um, and that's sent to Bitcoin Core. 
when we send out uh, to users, uh, we used to have like one transaction per uh, per withdrawal, but obviously at some point, um, you know, it becomes expensive. Um, so what we do is we have a, a, another like software that is creating these uh, batches of transactions, which are triggered based on a threshold or a time. So you you basically add uh, transactions to a batch. Well, you're adding outputs basically to a batch of transactions. And uh, at, if it goes over like one Bitcoin or every 60 minutes, uh, that batch of transaction is actually uh, transformed into an actual transaction in Bitcoin Core and sent out. Um, that does have a lot of privacy drawbacks because if, you, uh, if you're receiving withdrawals from an exchange and your transaction is batched in a batch of transaction, everybody else that was in that batch of transactions knows about the other outputs of everyone else and knows that every other output is presumably a user of that exchange. So again, if I'm a federal agency and I'm trying to track people, I would do like the reverse of a dust attack, like a dust withdrawal. I would just like withdraw constantly from an exchange, always be withdrawing a few dollars every minute just to see, just to have an overview of all the withdrawals of that exchange. Um, so you can actually, uh, when you're buying Bitcoin on bull, you can actually remove yourself from the transaction batch. And then what's really cool, if, if you do that, you pay the minor fee because for all the transactions that are batched, uh, we pay the minor fee. But if you want to do an express withdrawal, you say, hey, I don't want to be part of a batch. I want the Bitcoins to be sent right now. And I don't want to be, I don't want the other users to know about me. And we use the Bitcoin core uh, call we actually uh, deduce the amount from, that's something that people always, almost never do. You do a transaction and the fee is deducted from the amount that you send instead of added to the amount that you send. Um, so in this case, the fee is deducted from the amount that you send and you get it. Um, yeah, so we also have a bunch of tools for Lightning. So we started to accept Lightning like two years ago. We use C Lightning in CypherNode. Um, it's really, really cool. We have a lot of tools. A lot of automations. Uh, we have a bunch of the C Lightning plugins uh, in CypherNode. Um, the rebalancing plugin we use a lot. The stats plugin we use a lot. Uh, we personally use as an exchange uh, the CL Boss plugin, which is kind of a node manager that um, rebalances your channels and makes sure that the liquidity is is, is good automatically. And um, and yeah, so we also have the Liquid network in the Reddit in CypherNode and in Bull Bitcoin. I'll be honest, Liquid is not popular at all. Uh, very unpopular. Almost nobody uses Liquid, unfortunately. I think it's great uh, from an exchange standpoint. It's so easy to integrate because it's just like Bitcoin Core. It's just the same thing, uh, same UX. You create a deposit address. People send the money to it. You get a notification from your node that you've been paid. No problem. You send Bitcoin, you, you want to send a payment. You have the, the recipient's uh, uh, liquid address. You send uh, liquid to it, no problem. With Lightning, it's a lot more difficult to integrate. Uh, the Lightning UX is very, very different. First of all, um, before LN URL, the, the UX was pretty terrible because you're paying someone. I, I'm, I'm sending money to someone, but I have to wait for the user to invoice me, which is weird because the, the client is not supposed to be invoicing me for, for something, right? I'm supposed to just be pushing a payment out. Um, so the Liquid Network UX is fantastic. Nobody uses it, although that's sad. Uh, but that's just the market is spoken. Um, we also have another uh, cool bit of technology that nobody ever uses. It's called the Liquid CAD. Um, so I was trying to, I was messing around with Liquid, and I kind of had this idea that, uh, fiat coins are pretty useful. Uh, they are kind of useful to buy and sell Bitcoin mostly, but I didn't want to have a fiat coin that's redeemable for fiat. Um, so we created this thing called Liquid CAD. So uh, the Liquid CAD token is redeemable only for Bitcoin. So once you have a Liquid CAD token, you can't withdraw it for fiat. You can only use it to buy Bitcoin. So I kind of saw it as kind of like a gift card for Bitcoin that's denominated in Canadian dollars. Um, so we built that. That's the site for now. That's open source. You can do whatever asset you want on it. But again, nobody uses that at all. Um, it's, just a, it's just a novelty. Um, so that's, that's kind of like a, a technical overview of what bull Bitcoin is. Um, as I said, part 
is uh, open source. So if you're a developer, we do have a Slack channel. Um, there's, 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 I would say, about six or seven uh, companies that use CypherNode as their backend. Um, there's also a really neat wallet, uh, mobile wallet called Stackmate that uses the Bitcoin developer kit and also has CypherNode as its backend as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's a kind of like technical overview of Bowl. And uh, yeah, I'll take your questions and feel free to ask questions about opinion on some shitcoin. Uh, I'll just tell you it's a shitcoin, but apart from that, I'll, I'll be glad to answer. <laughs> oh no, I can, I can definitely announce. Uh, I'm just very, really bad at shilling. Uh, but yeah, so we also have, uh, we also launched a new uh, program we call the mission. Um, the mission, um, it is at its core, uh, a referral program but it's a little bit more than that. I wanted to create a kind of community of radical Bitcoin maximalists uh, that share uh, two values specifically, which is Bitcoin only and self-custody. Um, so uh, these are the two values that Bull Bitcoin was founded on. Uh, we will never compromise on any uh, of those values. Um, so the mission is basically a Telegram group. Uh, it's also a community of people. Um, and it's, it's basically just a bunch of, Bill Bitcoin super fans that are hanging out together. We're actually closing our referral program for people who are not part of the mission. Um, the mission is not open to the public because the referral is pretty big. It's 0.5% of the raw transaction. Um, so that's a lot. That's, that's a big chunk of, of our profit margin there. Uh, so we didn't want to have that available to, to anybody. So you kind of had to apply to get into it. Um, and, you know, the application criteria... I mean, if you guys are hanging out at a Bitcoin meetup, um, you're definitely in, you know what I mean? I just don't want like random people to be shilling this all over the web and make tons of money off of it and like, you know, be also shilling shit coins. The only rule is essentially like, if you're part of the mission, you're not allowed to shill shit coins. Like that's the only rule. Um, yeah, so that's it. So we just launched that a few days ago. Uh, if you want to apply, you go on ballbitcoin.com slash the mission. Um, or, uh, Alexandra's in our telegram group. So if you want to, you know, uh, you know, just ask her, uh, go through it, or, you know, uh, she can give you my telegram info and, uh, we can chat for sure. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to like earn some money and show uh, Bitcoin only and self custody, uh, I think that's a pretty good way to do it. So far, the group is, is pretty dope. And, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty high, uh, signal to noise ratio group that we're building. That's kind of the idea uh, of doing that. So yeah, I think it's going to bring a lot of value for everybody who's part of it. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, I was just going to ask, um, you mentioned LCAD. Um, so it's issued on Liquid. And I was just wondering, how has the adoption been for LCAD and its use cases? Very little, very little adoption, almost none, to be honest. Um, first of all, we didn't market LCAD at all. Um, to be honest, it was more of a novelty project. I was just interested in seeing, like, technically speaking, how that would work. A lot of the stuff that we do is just kind of intellectual curiosity. Um, there was one really awesome use case of LCAD uh, that appeared uh, for and lasted for about one year. And we launched it like two years ago. Um, we were, we were doing business with another Bitcoin exchange, um, for liquidity. Uh, so I, as a Bitcoin broker, we don't have our own order book, right? So when we sell Bitcoin to someone, they're, they're either coming from our users, you know, users are selling Bitcoin to us, uh, but we don't have like 50, 50 volumes of people selling and buying at the same time. So we have to buy them from somewhere else and sell them to somewhere else. And we were using an exchange and doing OTC trades, and we were doing this on fucking Telegram. And that's how a lot of the exchanges are working. You're like, um, you know, sending, hey, like, uh, can you credit? And, and, you know, you also kind of like credit and send money to each other. It's like, hey, um, can you add 200 grand to my balance? Uh, I, I'm going to send you a wire. Uh, those, those kind of conversations happen all the time. You kind of like, uh, you know, having like little debts that, that are very quick and it's crazy. It's kind of like an Excel spreadsheet at some point, you know, you're kind of tracking your balances. So with this other exchange that, that we were, um, uh, dealing with, we said, Hey, 
we have LCAD. Um, why don't you guys download LCAD? And you know, um, let's say like I send you a wire and you credit it right away, but it's actually going to hit your bank account in like one day. How about like I also send you some LCAD, the equivalent amount? So we were using LCAD like to track our balance sheets essentially, uh, because we could send LCAD and they would receive it right away. Whereas if we send a wire, it might take like 12 hours to 24 hours. That was a really niche um, and neat use case of LCAD. It was just like just using it to track balances. Um, the other use case of LCAD is, um, well, I mean, if every ideal in an ideal world, if if I if I could like choose what the customer is doing, um, I would have people sell LCAD for cash on secondary markets, right? So. Um, people are buying LCAD for cash and then funding their bull Bitcoin account with LCAD because LCAD transactions are confidential transactions. So the amount that we receive on the exchange is not public on the blockchain. Um, LCAD is also just like Bitcoin. Uh, there's no chargeback. It's not reversible. I mean, it's not practically reversible. Um, so it's actually a really good way for an exchange to receive payments. Uh, so in an ideal world, people, they may want to like, and if, if, if I was also in an ideal world, I would also hold customer deposits in LCAD as a client side liquid network wallet in, the, in their browser or in the mobile app that we're building. Um, instead of being custodian of the fiat in uh, purely just like a ledger in our own internal database, that could be also on the liquid network. But to be honest, I mean, the 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 power of of a of a fiat coin uh, is not the technology at all. It's just the network effect, right? So a good example of that is the fact that um, USDT is mostly on Tron, which is a mega shit mega shit coin, mega shit blockchain. But uh, it raised so much money, was able to bribe a lot of exchanges into accepting it. Nobody else uses LCAD. There's no other exchange that will accept LCAD. No, that's not true. Um, you can actually trade LCAD on a decentralized liquid network ex exchange called TDEX, which is a really cool app, by the way. Um, but yeah, so LCAD's a dead project as far as I'm concerned. It's very, very low adoption. Um, it, was, it was fun to integrate, but not, not the future of bull Bitcoin, that's for sure. Interesting. I have one about LCAD. Like, is it like a full <laughs> Bitcoin project or what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really lost. I don't know what it is. It's a liquid. Yeah, liquid Canadian. It's it's Bitcoin. it's on the liquid network. So uh, it's a bull Bitcoin project on the liquid network. I am on the on the oversight board of the Liquid Federation. I was a big fan of Liquid for a long time. I actually saw Liquid as being a a scaling solution for Bitcoin. I was never interested in the assets part of Liquid at all. If you're going to uh, be issuing a shit coin or a shit fiat token, um, Liquid is probably the most technologically uh, suitable platform, but it's definitely the worst platform. And that's the thing that I realized working with Liquid a lot is people that issue tokens don't care about the technology, they care about the network effect. Liquid does not have its own native token, so there's no community of Liquid holders that are going to pump any shit coin that's on Liquid. Um, so I would say it's a... You know, if you're looking to scam people or uh, do anything, Liquid is a very terrible solution. Uh, there's not a lot of adoption of Liquid anywhere uh, at all. Bitfinex has adopted Liquid. That's pretty much it. That's the only major one. There's maybe a few more. Um, there is some tether on Liquid, but it's very little. So yeah, so Liquid is is it's techni technologically pretty. I mean, Liquid is very similar to it, Liquid is a is a federation. Right with a consensus network, so it's kind of like it's a multi, it's a Bitcoin multi-sig. Um, so it's it's not extremely different from what Fediment is, really. It it is very different from Fediment, but you know conceptually it's it's rather similar. Um, it's a bunch of custodians that are holding um, a coin, which is the liquid Bitcoin, which is pegged one to one to actual Bitcoin, and the difference with liquid is that um, you can run a liquid node and audit the fact that there is no more liquid Bitcoin created than uh, the Bitcoin that are in the liquid multi-sig. So 
uh, it's, it's very interesting, but again, almost no adoption of this project. There's only one wallet, green wallet. It's the only wallet that it's, it's a Blockstream project. Liquid is, is run by the Blockstream company. But then LCAT, like it's issued by, by full Bitcoin and there's a reserve Canadian for one. Okay. Because I got confused yeah. when you said like instead of sending you a wire, I can send you like this like full Bitcoin coin that is instantaneous and I owe yeah. you Canadian dollar. So yeah. it's kind of yeah. confusing yeah. because it's the same thing, you know, like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so every LCAD is a debt to someone that's held in our bank account. So when you buy LCAD, you send us like a thousand bucks. We send you a thousand worth of LCAD. We have your thousand bucks in our bank account. So LCAD is a full counterparty thing. It's not an algorithmic or a decentralized thing. It's literally a gift card. It's the same exact thing as a gift card. Um, anybody building anything on Lightning by any chance in the room? <laughs> no. um, one person um, will be working on Sea Lightning. He's not here. He's supposed to be here, uh, but Leo yeah, he's not feeling well. But uh, our Lightning building a Lightning hero um, is unfortunately not here right now. Oh, we have that's two right. people in the room. Um, we have two people who work for Lightning Labs, um, and we have one person. I don't know who wants to out themselves. We have a few people in the room. Um, <laughs> cool. The camera can't see past here. So. Actually, the majority like, of the room. There's like 10 or 12 people on the side. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Oh, nice. I was like, this is a nice, cozy fireside chat going on there. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah. great to see you guys. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so for Lightning, if you guys have any questions about Lightning, I will say one thing about Lightning. I was going to do a talk at Adopting Bitcoin in El Salvador last year. Um, and I, I think the title of my talk was Lightning Sucks. <laughs> but it was, it was a joke because I, I was just working on a Lightning network problem. I think it was something like uh, uh, I, the real title was going to be Lightning Network Payments Reliability. So Lightning is the best payment method of all time when it works. Now it's, it's, it's getting to be very, very reliable. But as, as an exchange, there's one thing that I realized, right? It's like when you're receiving payments, as a, as a payment processor, as a service, you don't see when it's, it fails because you're only notified of a payment when it's successful, <laughs> obviously, because you're on the receiving end. But when you're sending payments uh, massively, that's when you see that there is a lot of uh, uh, unreliability. At some point, our, our payment success rate was like, when we first launched Lightning, it was like really bad. It was like 40%. And that's because we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. And um, I thought that opening lightning network channels with as many people as possible was the best idea in the world. I was like, I'm going to be opening channels with plebs all over the place, small channels. We're going to be, have a decentralized uh, network of channels connecting to and from us. That ended up being a terrible idea. Um, I later realized that having a smaller amount of larger channels was way more reliable. Um, but I, I'm happy to report that after a year and a half of uh, almost two years of fiddling with Lightning Network, our, our payment success rate is all, it's about at ninety percent and, and climbing. So, so that's great. So, um, the the thing about Lightning that that has really, um, I, I was a Lightning skeptic in the beginning, just because the hype didn't seem to be reflected in the reality. Because as someone who's integrated from an exchange standpoint, I was like. It's just such a nightmare to integrate. It's so clunky. Like, no wonder it took Kraken so long to integrate. It's not easy to integrate. I mean, it's, it feels like it's easy, but it's like when you're doing like hundreds and thousands of payouts and people are used to having the payout right away. Uh, and also, um, uh, but to finish that point, um, and the, but the, the developer community of Lightning has just absolutely blew my, blown my mind. Uh, I, I thought a lot of it was like vaporware in the beginning. Um, like, oh yeah, this problem is going to be solved by this new technology. Uh, that sounded, that sounded like a lot like sharding with Ethereum to me. Um, but it did actually come through, uh, and all at the, you know, at the app layer, um, I'm sad Will's not here cause I've been following his progress a lot and the LN URL people, Fiat Jeff, just absolutely mind blowing work. And actually when LN URL was created was the moment, cause I first integrated lightning in 2019 and the, and the user experience was abysmal because we had to get the user to like copy an invoice and then we had to decode the invoice and he, he had to input exactly the amount that we wanted to receive. And there was like a 15 minute window because our rates are readjusted every 15 minutes. 
So it was super clunky. But when um, LN URL came out, uh, and then the end user to receive Bitcoin only had to scan something on a web page, I was like, ah, oh, that's exactly the user experience that I wanted. So that's um, phenomenal. Um, so yeah, and then uh, I was going to say something cool about Lightning, but I forgot. Um, but yeah, Lightning definitely works now. Um, it's got a, a lot better, and uh, the withdrawals are, are, are working great. And uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a talk about Lightning and scaling Bitcoin, no, adopting Bitcoin again this year in El Salvador. And it's probably not going to be uh, how um, unreliable Lightning is. Uh, Lightning is actually getting a lot better. Um, yeah, there was one thing that was super interesting about Lightning from a non-custodial standpoint, which is, which is a very niche problem, a very a weird problem, which is that when you're buying Bitcoin on Bull Bitcoin, um, when you click buy, uh, they're yours. We send them right away to your wallet. We're not custodial because we require you to give us a Bitcoin address before you even uh, click the buy button. Like you're not, you're not allowed to, to click buy if you if you don't have an address for for us for us to send the bitcoins to. Um, but for Lightning, we were faced, and then Bitcoin's reliability rate is 100%. Every single time we send Bitcoin to someone the transaction is successfully confirmed. It has never happened. We've never had an orphan transaction in like nine years. I know it's obviously possible, but it's just never happened. But with Lightning, we had this interesting problem, which was like, holy shit, if someone buys Bitcoin and we try to send a payment to them and that payment fails, then the money goes back to us. And how do we account for that balance? Because we actually do not even have a Bitcoin balance in our database. There's, there's, no, there's no like... Entry like this user has this amount of bitcoins. This user has this amount of fiat. It's just this user has this amount of fiat. So when the Lightning Network payments would fail, we had this ghost Bitcoin balance. Like we had a debt, so we had to pay. And then how do we contact this person? You know what happens if they're non-responsive? Then we're stuck being custodial. And like I don't want to be custodial by accident. Um. So actually, in our LN URL implementation, what we did is. Whenever we create an LN URL voucher, and same thing for the LN URL voucher, what happens if we decide to pay someone by creating an LN URL voucher and they don't scan it? We don't have any control over this. So maybe they forget to scan the LN URL voucher and then we're stuck holding a Bitcoin denominated debt to this person, which we don't want to at all. Um, so actually when you create an LN URL voucher in our system, you have to give a fallback address and our LN URL voucher will self-destruct after like, um, right now the setting is seven days because sometimes people need some time to like set up their channels, but realistically it's gonna be like one day or half a day. If you don't claim the LN URL voucher within like one day, it will self-destruct and then fall back to an on-chain transaction. By the way, this whole system which does, which handles this is also open source. It's called LN URL Cypher app in our, in our Satoshi portal repository. By the way, Satoshi portal is the real name of Bull Bitcoin. It was called Satoshi Portal when we founded it, but it was not very sexy. So Bull Bitcoin is the, the new brand name. So that's, that's, that's my, uh, my piece to say on Lightning. So I am no longer a Lightning skeptic, um, proud to say. I actually, in Costa Rica, I live in a place called uh, um, the Southwestern Coast. Uh, there's a bunch of towns there. Uh, and uh, there's a, an organization called Bitcoin Jungle CR. Uh, it's called the South Region. Uh, they operate over there in like four or five different towns. And they have successfully orange pills, orange pilled uh, all the farmers markets, um, all the grass fed butchers, the fruit vendors, the milk vendors, the cheese vendors, uh, it's coffee vendors, phenomenal uh, stuff. So um, I'm able to spend all my groceries with Lightning. But about 70% of my expenses are also my landlord uh, accepts Lightning payments and they do work. Um, I can spend about, you know, 1,500, 2,000 bucks reliably with lightning now. So, um, you know, you can't really be a skeptic if you're spending 70% of your expenses on lightning. So lightning is awesome. Sorry, what was the name of that? It was LNURL what? LNURL dash cipher app. Um, so the okay. software project is called CypherNode and it's a Docker infrastructure, but we also have a system of plugins essentially, uh, called Cypher apps. You just basically wrap your app into Docker and you insert it in the Docker infrastructure so that they can communicate with Lightning or Bitcoin nodes or 
Um, open timestamp is also in there. Liquid is there. Um, Wasabi is wrapped as a, a daemon in there as well. So the software repo is Satoshi Portal. That's the, or, sorry, the organization. And then that one is cool. LNURL dash cipher app. Cool. Thank you. Well, if there's no other questions, Francis, thank you so much for joining us. Um, cool. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a good evening, guys. Take it easy. A big thank you to Vancouver Bitcoiners executive crew. This would not happen without all of you. And finally, big thank you to Murdoch Media for producing all of these episodes.